YouTube, what's going on? Before we start this video, listen up. 245academy.com, we are releasing a new series. It's called Building a Million Dollar Company in Six Months. It's perfect if you're the barber who has ideas, whether it's a new business in your area or it's an e-commerce business or it's just a product that you wanna create. You know, we all have a lot of ideas, but it's really, really hard trying to figure out how to make it a reality. And for so many of us, we'll have to go through a lot of mistakes in order to, to make our dreams come true. We're here to create this series to help Help you mitigate some of the risks some of the challenges some of the failures that, that you're gonna see during your journey and so if you could leverage other people's experiences like ours in the 245 academy i think it's a great idea so go check it out 245 academy.com it's like 20 dollars a month if you wanted to wait a few months you could and catch the whole series cancel after a month we don't care about that but if you want to be more involved we drop we're going to be releasing this series weekly and we'll probably do panels and q a's and stuff if you guys got questions on it so yeah i'm super excited about this series but with that being said man if you want to sign up there'll be a link in the description below for 245academy.com let's go ahead and start this video oh and also this series is released every single monday on 245academy.com build a million dollar company in six months do y'all think we're going to be able to do it let me know in the comments if you think we're going to be able to do it all right so anyways i was scrolling through on my ipad and i saw this video right here by youtube barber academies industry secrets they don't want you to know and although i would love to watch a, a haircut tutorial right now i feel like what's really transforming is topics like what i might be hearing in this video by youtube barber academy i'm gonna watch it react to it add my little gems or point out some strong gems so yeah let's see hopefully this is a good video let's check it out I mean, all I'm his videos are usually good, so bunker, I'm not secrets, doubting my guy. Do not, you call me Little Flip. <laughs> I flip out every fade. <laughs> Clippers. I only use one trimmer. Flick every fade every time. Think about this. Do you think good barbers are just flicking their wrist and getting lucky every time they do a good haircut? Think again. That's as dumb as texting and driving. So let's put a spotlight on the situation. In order to fade properly, you are going to have to be able to hit every single length on this chart. So if you notice in this chart at the very bottom, we have skin, skin to trimmer. This means that your trimmer has to be able to cut as close to skin as possible. Now to get the skin, we're gonna use the electric shaver. So we need to make a small jump in between the skin and the electric shaver, which is why we got to talk about zero gapping. We'll talk about that in a second. We're also going to be talking about, assuming you can afford it, what the absolute best setup is to give you the absolute best results. And I'm not necessarily talking about brands. I ran a poll, what's more important? Learning how to fade, learning how to build clients, or impressing other barbers. And surprisingly, 2% of people did vote for impressing other barbers. We'll get into the poll later. <laughs> <laughs> I want to also, you kind of want to stop before you reach the top of this line because you don't want to make this an even harsher line than it is. You want to give yourself space to be able to create the blend. So as long as you've handled phase one properly, you've skinned them down, you might have to go back with your trimmer slightly in this step to kind of make sure that that's all uniform. But if it is, you're not going to have a trouble going into the next step. Next step, we're going to put the clipper in the open position and we are going to cut our guideline. We're going to do this editing. around the whole head. Hey, you guys got to appreciate that level of effort that he's putting in to this video. This is dope, bro. This is really dope. Width all the way around. Now, the width of this guideline that you set, that's going to be how compressed your blend is. So if you're trying to get one of them low fades where it gets from skin to real tight into like a really long hair quick, you're going to want to make all these guidelines a little bit skinnier. All right, let's stop for just a second. This is the area that you're going to struggle in if you don't have your stuff zero gap and set up properly. So so perfect timing on the zero gap for the Evo and hitter. We're I have those. I just haven't tried them. They now. sent me those. In order to zero gap this, you're actually going to loosen these two bolts here do you even zero gap bro <laughs> now we're going to take our cutting blade and we are going to set it on our stationary blade the amount of space there is between the two that's what we're talking about when we say zero gap i'm just going to slide this up i want it almost flush with it but perfectly straight now it's yeah that's why I, when i was when i first started on youtube i noticed that people I, I hated using the term zero gap because I felt like it, it was misleading, like it confused a lot of people. Like I, I would always say I don't zero gap. I just adjust my clippers really close. I want like a little gap, a little space. And then what I would find is that people immediately would do would think zero gap is is 
just flush. And then all of a sudden, these guys who are just starting out are, are slicing people up and, and they're actually becoming surgeons, not necessarily barbers. In order for me to combat that a little bit, at least to my viewers, I was just telling them I don't zero gap, but I do adjust them. That was a uphill battle that I definitely lost because everybody just kept using the term zero gap. And so you got to explain how to zero gap at least once a year, you, at least once a year, because some people are, are coming on a little bit later. They're zero gapping their trimmers so damn sharp that all you see is, you know, a red uh, guideline. You don't even got to do the, the the pencil no more. The white pencil will leave an ash line because you're just going to have, have scabs that follow your your lineup anyways. So what's the point of, of, of using ash? <laughs> that was a little bit of a, a rant, but that was something I battled all the time when I first started my YouTube channel. It's funny. Feel any discomfort? Test it this way. This is kind of an extreme case. And that's how you get your trimmer set. Yeah, I like to, to do it here too, just to see if I get discomfort or if it feels sharp. This is typically the area where you'll right away see people scar up. I like to try it on my neck as well, because right away, that's a sensitive area. If it's too sharp, then I know to adjust it. Because I like my trimmers, man, all around. This step's gonna be a little bit wider. We're gonna put our number one on in the open position, and we're gonna make our kind of final guideline, if you will. I wanna say this real quick, and this is something that I would teach on foundations. He's not wrong. He, this is an amazing example, by the way. Like, the fact that he's giving this level of detail for free is, is, is sick. It's awesome. Again, he's not wrong, but I would like to add this. It's not just about length and measurements, right? It's all also about color, the color of the hair. So depending on what this canvas is, this is why consultations are super important, right? Depending on the, the characteristics of your client's hair, let's say this is your client, it determines a lot of how you have to adjust this system. Let's say this person has light brown hair, not the, the thickest hair, right? Not the most density. So the amount of hair follicles in a specific area is medium and his hair texture is coarse and straight. That would mean you would be able to see right through the scalp, even if you had like a number five or a number three, I should say a number three, where other textures of hair with a number three, you won't see the scalp, right? There's all all kinds of different characteristics that you have to pay attention to and this is great foundational information but i would argue especially here in this area i would argue you probably shouldn't open it up this much with a one open you probably shouldn't have that much space and the reason why is because of gradients the color of what a one open looks like on some people some people one open can look really thin so if you open it up this much what you risk is spreading out the fade too much and not and and what ends up happening is this is super light right this is this area right here is going to be super light this area is going to be a little bit darker and then this area is going to be the same the same color tone all the way here it's not going to be enough of a transition i feel like into darkness so if we're taking color into consideration like how dark it's going to look right between the half open and a one open it just isn't that drastic to me where you need that much space to create a transition from a half open to a one open. You know, because we're thinking about color. We're thinking about gradients, the transition in color. It's just not that great of a difference from here to here to need that much space in between. Although measurements would tell you he needs that much space, just the color in, in, on most canvases, on most clients are not going to require that. I would argue that actually the difference between, for example, completely bald, the trimmer, to a blade open that's great the difference in color between a blade open and a one open probably over here right you just need that much space to create that transition it looks really really good because all this in this area is going to be as dark as you can keep it so from light to dark it's going to really really pop and i think that's plenty of space from here to here is plenty of space i just think like there's probably like a half inch too much in space here just a different perspective neither one of us are wrong here this what is you're going to though. notice now, you got all your guidelines in. We're going to begin closing this one guard. Uh, I like to do it like one or two clicks at a time, and I like to stay just underneath where I was. Again, closing it another couple clicks. We got it about halfway closed, and I'm going to close it all the way. And you're going to notice that between the open taper line and the one all the way, all this line will be blended out. Now, we can circle back and we can hit this open taper line that we left. What I was talking about with the flicking, little flick, the guy that you've seen in the beginning that had to hide his identity, a lot of barbers think, and I think a lot of clients and a lot of people think that we're just good at flipping our wrist, and that's yeah. how we're getting this done. That's not true at all. In fact, I just want to say thank you. 
It, there ain't a lot of barbers that are teaching you that. Everything is flick your wrist, flick your wrist, flick, tr just flick your wrist. You don't have to flick your wrist like that, guys. You're seeing how this actually works. Just cut the length that you that you need it to go and, and create those transitions. Just see what, you don't need to fl flick your wrist to create gradients. You don't need to flick your wrist to go from lighter to darker. Listen, my OGs, you guys know why I don't like fade blades, why I always swap to that taper blade, because with no guard on, if I put that thing on a flat surface, it's already got a curve. So I'll either use, if I want a true length, I'll use the teeth or whatever. I will tilt it like this and just use the teeth and have a, a straight cut. If I'm looking to create a faint guideline, I'll use the back side of the taper because it creates that curve already and that line that it creates will be more faint, more gra graduated. This is unbelievable bars right here. To what the number one guard is supposed to cut, you actually have to hold it flush on the scalp to do so. Sometimes the hair is just laying down, it won't get cut. Sometimes they slept on it funny. Sometimes things just don't work out the way they should because there's a lot of concave. Oh, that's so much bars. That's so much, that's so much bars. Guys, if you're just flicking like this, some hair just isn't gonna feed into the teeth if you're flicking crazy. You gotta cut the hair. So I don't care if you go slow, cut the damn hair. You know, like if the hair needs to be cut, cut it. If you're flicking like this, like all crazy and stuff, you don't even know if you're cutting the hair. You might just be pushing hair away or moving it and it looks right. But I didn't know I was gonna get this passionate about this video. <laughs> we're gonna snap our half guard on and we are going to put that about halfway open and we're just going to run in there. I, I wanna point something out too and I, I don't know if, if he's gonna point it out, but blend, look up the definition of, of a blend. Define blend and it says here, Mix with another substance so that they combine together a mixture of different things. It's a mix. Mixing two two substances, two section, two whatever, and um, combining them together. So what would you have to do in order to create a blend when you're fading? The reason why people use blend is because here's a guideline. This guideline right here, let's say, is your trimmer. The next guideline, let's say, is your blade open. The next guideline is your one open. And let's say by here, you're doing clipper over comb or whatever. If this area is supposed to be bald, I bro, I use my shaver all the way up here. I don't care. The reason why is because in order to get a really nice fade, we have to blend each of these sections, which means I'm going to have to go up higher than this line at some point in order to erase this line. And essentially what I'm really doing is I'm blending this section into this section. And so what ends up happening is you blend a little bit into here and this section blends a little bit into here and that's how you get a fade from here to here and every barber does it but they think they're just taking out lines or hard lines every barber does it when they go back to their trimmer which is the length of this section and they go up a little bit higher with their trimmer all they're really doing is blending this section into this one it's a mixture of those two sections but a lot of times more times than none you do have to blend sections into one another and i don't hear enough barbers explaining that it's a different way to look at you know, what you're essentially doing. So working it back and forth on angles, I call this a crisscross pattern. If you use this crisscross pattern, no matter what direction the grain's growing in, no matter what direction the hair's laying in, the crisscross pattern, cut it another damn nugget. On to the two most important Clean. things that you're gonna need in your arsenal. One is going to be your fade blade. You're gonna wanna have a second clipper that has a taper blade on it. That's a dope concept and a lot of barbers use that as well, that tactic. But what I like doing is using my main clipper, right? Let's say it's the seniors or the clipper FXs or the Rebels, let's say those, whatever clipper is your main clipper, right? And then what I like to use is a faster blade, a faster motor, something that's maybe magnetic, or I like something with more torque to do the most of, of the fading. I don't care if it's a taper blade or a fade blade. I just want something with more torque, right? And then I like to detail with something that has a faster blade because they cut differently. Detailing with it, if you're trying to take out a specific spot, it's really, really good in my opinion. My goal is to have something that cuts completely different than my go-to clipper. It's kind of like fusing the power and the benefits of both of those two different types of clippers that are designed for two different types of cutting. It's like fusing those two powers together. I'm um, getting all your, you know, the what's that villain with all the rings it's like that and then all of a sudden you have like superpowers to create the dopest cut you could possibly do is going to be having two trimmers now i have my evo gotta have and two the trimmers evo I has definitely gammas, that. and then you want to have one that's hitting like like freaking samurai sword man like this one's <laughs> really set close i used to always have another trimmer in a drawer and it was for my kids and not because 
I didn't want to be as sharp, but I needed one with a smaller blade. That slimline blade, just something with a smaller blade, because some kids have really small foreheads and you know their eyebrows are really close to their C cup or their vertical bars. I don't know his opinion on this, but this answer right here should have been like 80%. Should have been like 80%. What do y'all think in the comments? That's wild. Fade, people thought it was more important than building clientele. That's kind of the whole purpose. It's chicken or the egg, you know? That's that's what this question was, kind of. What came first, the chicken or the egg? Most people are not gonna remember how you made them look. However, they will always remember how you made them feel. And if you're making them feel good, you should be in the shop, building relationships, making people feel good, because that's gonna make them wanna come to you. Facts. That's gonna tell others about you, and they're gonna wanna send their friends to you. So that's how you're gonna wind up building your clientele. And most people don't even know what a great fade looks like it's very rare i see somebody with a nice haircut and, and i'm like that's a nice haircut much more common that i see people with bad haircuts you'll get better at fading with reps and over time but if you can't build clientele you don't even have a profession so comment section says been cutting for 30 years but on what downtime i'm watching learning how to improve yeah you could tell man like who is a student of the game man and it never stops you always keep getting better bro i learned how to just wall clippers as a teenager my dad taught me eddie you're absolutely killing it man yeah this was an amazing video eddie great job as always man I, I really enjoy watching eddie's videos make sure you guys are subscribed i am not subscribed well this is on my ipad so wait a second see this is what i don't like about youtube i promise you guys i was subscribed to eddie bro this is common knowledge within the youtube creator space youtube will just like unsubscribe you randomly from people's channels and then they'll put up this banner in your dashboard that says you may see um lower subscriber numbers as we are removing bots or fake accounts or whatever i did not unsubscribe to eddie i promise you youtube be playing games so if that's the case and you're not sure you sub subscribe to eddie or myself go check the subscribe thing and subscribe to us um <laughs> youtube barber academy will be linked in the description below appreciate your videos man and uh thank you guys for watching my video so yeah, have a good one.